Hi everybody, welcome back to creating and running an Agile project in JIRA. This is section three. This will be about running your project. In section one, we figured out what is JIRA and how to get started with creating projects. In section two, we talked about managing all of those work items, what the different work items were. We went into a lot of detail about that. And in section three now, we're gonna talk about now your project is running and you need to use JIRA to manage that project while it's running. In this section, we're gonna talk about creating and starting a sprint. We're gonna talk about the daily scrum. We're gonna talk about smaller stories or tasks and which one's better for your team. And then we're gonna talk about closing the sprint and how to end a sprint. So getting started with creating and starting your sprint, the first thing we'll look at in this section. We're gonna talk about reviewing the backlog interface. We're gonna take a quick look at that again. We're gonna talk about backlog refinement and creating ready work. We're gonna talk about sprint planning and how to plan a commitment and how to set up your sprint and then start the sprint, all right? Now in the last section, we talked a lot about epic stories, bugs and tasks and a lot of detail. And so if you wanna talk more about those things or look deeper into those, then go back to section two and look at those again. Here we're gonna talk about creating and starting a sprint. So we'll look quickly at the backlog view. Now it's going to allow you to prioritize the stories and tasks and bugs and things that are in there. We can filter the views so we can get a lot of items in that backlog. You can get a look at different views of those by using filters. Then we're going to create sprints so that we have containers for that work. We're going to look at story point estimations and want to make sure those are all set before you start a sprint because once you start that sprint, you'll want to make sure you don't modify those values unless you have to. We're going to take a look at sizing the team commitment. So understanding how big should a sprint be? How many story points should we pull into a sprint? and then adjustments to a sprint once it's in progress and what we can do and not do there. All right, so let's go ahead and flip over to JIRA. All right, so we're gonna look at this project. This is the backlog view, and you can see we have some stories in the backlog here. We have four stories, a task, and a bug. We can prioritize these items by just dragging and dropping them, and you can see we can move them around and make them you know, in whatever priority order. The most important would be on the top. You can see that these stories have point values, okay? So you can see that over here on the right side, you can see this first story has a story point value of three, and the one below it is a story point value of one, et cetera. When, remember those story points then, refer to the doubt, effort, and complexity contained within this item. We have the ability to edit those values by selecting an item, and you can see that in the right in the preview pane, you can edit some of those values, whether it's the status, assignee labels, story points, et cetera. And then we've got the ability here at the top to filter by assignee, as well as some other quick filters here, right? Only my issues, recently updated issues, and things like that. You can see, obviously, there's just one assignee here, which is me, but otherwise, you would have your whole team listed here. Okay, so now that we have this backlog with some items in it, we want to do a couple of things here. First of all, you've got what's called a definition of ready, all right? And any of your items that have been fully refined, which means that all of the questions have been answered, all of the understanding of what this thing is have been defined and they meet what's called a definition of ready for your team. Your definition of ready could mean, you know, it's got acceptance criteria in it. So we understand when will the product owner think this item is done and other criteria will be met in order for it to be ready. We wanna have, ideally at least two sprints of ready work that's that's you know ready to go at any time so let's do that first so we'll create a sprint here we're going to call this sprint ready all right now you can see under these ellipses here we can edit this sprint and we can call this ready and this is say work that is fully refined all right so we'll update that, and now we have what this ready sprint. And you can see these first three stories here in our backlog, they look like they're ready to go, all right? So let's drag them up into our ready sprint, and you can see it's actually just as easy as dragging them up here. And now we have a sprint called ready, and this has items in it that are fully refined and ready to go, okay? Now what we wanna do is we wanna create a sprint that we're actually going to execute, okay? So let's go down here, we'll create another sprint, and which this is ready to, but let's change that one and we'll call this one, let's see, this is FP1 Sprint 1. Perfect, and this 
is my first sprint. And we can actually take this item and we can move it up and put it at the top. So now we have this is our sprint that we'll actually be planning. And then this is work that's ready to go at any time. Okay, and then th this backlog down here represents anything else that is in this list of things that we might want to eventually do. All right, so we're going to take these items, and we're, or two of them, let's say, and we'll pull them up into our sprint. Now, the next question might be, how do we know when we have enough story points loaded into our sprint? How do we know when we have enough work in there? And it's a great question. Usually, the way you're going to want to know this is you're going to try and get a group commitment on your first sprint. And then in your second sprint, you'll kind of do the same thing based on your output from your first sprint. Now, the number of story points that you complete in your sprint is called your velocity. All right, so you use the velocity from your previous sprint to help you determine for the next sprint. Were we able to complete it, yes or no? And then adjust accordingly. Now, after three sprints, you'll have what's called yesterday's weather. And the reason that they call it that is because yesterday's weather is known, right? We know what the weather was yesterday, but the weather tomorrow is a forecast. That's the best we can do there. Um, it's usually pretty close, but it may not be exactly right. So we can use yesterday's weather, which is the average of the velocity for the last three sprints, and that becomes the maximum that we'll wanna plan to. So given that as a team here, FP Sprint 1 doesn't have a previous velocity, then we're gonna go ahead and commit to four story points, you can see here, and we'll see whether or not we're able to complete those. All right, so now that we've got our sprint all set to go, story points are in there, all of the stories meet our definition of ready, We've even got some additional stuff here in case we finish these things early. Let's go ahead and start our sprint. Now you'll see that we have the ability to name the sprint, which we already did, the duration of this sprint with start and end dates, and the sprint goal. See how many working days are in this sprint. Let's go ahead and start our sprint.